Sorry, guys. Okay. Uh, so we were talking about the ideation process and how to come up with a good idea. And we've already talked about the different characteristics of a good idea. We've just listed them, but we're going to talk about them in detail in the next few slides. So what does it take for you to come up with a good idea? The first thing with ideas is having a problem to solve. So this can be, getting a problem can be something you've encountered in your day-to-day -day life. For example, you could be a bank teller and you receive calls from different uh, customers each and every day and sometimes it's, or inquiries and you're aware that, and sometimes it takes you, uh, for example, many hours to do that job when you know AI can also like come in and help with the job. So, um, for the the bank teller taking too much time on uh, answering calls, uh, messaging inquiries, that could be a problem. And if you can reduce the time that a bank teller talks or talks to their client, that could be like one of the problems. Um, when you're defining your problem, uh, don't uh, limit yourself. There are very many different problems, uh, but just for this exercise, let's try and stick to uh, the fintech. Uh, the other thing after defining your problem is to get inspiration or insights. And this could be from different data sources, from banks, from stocks, or talk to people who are actually working in the industry or the insurance places. Um, just talk to them and get a uh, feel of how or what they do on a day-to-day -day basis and some of the ways that uh, you can improve their work better. After getting an inspiration, it's good to map out those ideas. It could be on your notebook or you could use tools like MindMap. That's a link you can just click and follow. It's a way to help you put all, to structure all your ideas well. Uh, into yeah into yeah to structure your idea as well and then after having a lot of ideas uh of how to approach the certain problem you need to prioritize which ideas are the best uh among all the all the solutions that you've chosen so one problem can have many solutions but you need to choose the one that is actually the best and then after choosing the best idea, you now come and develop a concept or different, or it could be a prototype. So build a project or anything just to prove your concept or idea, and then start evaluating and refining it. This could be uh, putting your product to test users, ETC, and seeing how people react to your product. Um, if you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. Um, but yeah, those are the steps involved with ideation process. Um, one of the frameworks that uh, that is usually used when refining your ideas is design thinking. And it's a very nonlinear process of thinking. So the main, these are the main components of design thinking. So the first thing, the first component is empathy. Empathy could be feeling uh, empathy is just how you feel about someone being in a certain situation. So for example, if there's a problem that needs to be solved, uh, you need to develop that empathy for trying to try, trying to solve it first before uh, before coming up with uh, with a prototype. So um, so the empathy, as you can see on this graph here, it defines the problem that you're going to, you're going to solve. After defining the problem, you start to ideate. So create, try new ideas, um, make different prototypes and see which one works, which one doesn't work. After, after testing, you continue iterating just to improve it. So this is a document on how, on the five stages of design thinking. Um, you can just click and go through them in detail. This is just uh, one of the frameworks that can be used or that can guide you to 
come up with a good idea. So when also coming up with good ideas, it's always good to have data sources to back your problem. You can, you can, you can, for example, in your day-to-day -day uh, interactions with other people, you might find one person with a problem and you start to think, oh, this is actually a problem that needs to be solved. But without actual data to prove that a lot of people are being impacted by this problem, it, it won't really be, um, it won't be a problem that solves, that scales. So um, there are some of the sources where you can get your data to prove your ideas. So it could be um, government agencies, for example, National Bureau of Standards. I don't know how you call them in Ethiopia, but in Kenya, it's Kenya National Bureau of Statistics. So they have um, they have a huge data data sets uh, where you can uh, find data about people and yeah, and then there's also different international organizations. For example, WHO, UNDP. They have um, public data on their websites. Uh, there are different institution research institutions whose main work is to collect data and sell them, or sometimes they give them for free. Uh, we also have non-profit organizations, for example, uh, World Economic Forum. These are just some of the websites when you search through, you can see they always do some analysis and you can see what kind of, um, what kind of data uh, is there. And there are also open data portals, for example, this is for Kenya, for US, data.gov, data. So if you want to get data on, on the on, on US statistics, European statistics. Um, World Bank is also a good place to get data. Um, European data portal is if you're trying to get data on EU. Uh, so do some research and see what other data sources you can get from the Ethiopian market. And also remember that there's always some data privacy attached to um, sensitive data. And yeah, also social media platforms. Uh, for example, this week you're getting your data from Telegram. Those are some of the data sources that can help you uh, validate your idea. So when it comes to like, so let's just have, uh, go through the different finance technologies. I know you, you already know this, um, but just to give you an idea of some of the, um, fintech technologies that exist currently and so from this topics uh, these are not the specific topics that you're supposed to choose your idea from feel free to go and look for other topics as well but on this on this different technologies how can you improve the different credit scoring platforms um are you are you guys aware of the different uh finance technologies listed over there just by a show of hands, just raise a hand if you're aware of it. Okay, great. Uh, that's great. So we have the different credit scoring platforms to decide um, how much loan to give to other people. We have retail solutions, for example, supermarkets, uh, online e-commerce platforms. Uh, I don't know in Ethiopia which e-commerce platforms you have, but in Kenya we have things like Jumia. Also, uh, software technologies to handle supply chain finance, digital payments, for example, M-Pesa, banking, insurance. So when you're thinking through your idea, go through the different uh, technologies in the finance sector and then try and see which area has a problem that you can improve. If, for example, the credit scoring platforms currently are not working well and you actually have the data to prove it, how can you use Gen AI to improve all these currently running technologies? Um, so when, when we talk about now integrating Gen AI into the fintech industry, um, there's a fine line in deploying AI in fintech. And this is because it requires 100% uh, accuracy. So for example, if 
you want to predict someone's uh, credit score. If you use a, an AI uh, model to help you do this and then it hallucinates and someone is given um, more money or less than they should have been given, it's going to bring in a lot of inaccuracies. So always have that in mind. So make sure that your idea um, also encompasses this uh, topic. So um, make sure it follows its accuracy. And the other thing about Gen AI in FinTech is it's mostly less about consumer facing tools. For example, the credit scoring platforms or the, or the banking systems, ETC. But you, it's mostly currently more, mostly leveraged by big banks. Uh, for example, big data, considering the banks already have like huge data. So they're going, uh, most, it's mostly used for banks use this to help uh, reduce or to help analyze all these uh, large chunks of data. So to make uh, better informed decisions, provide personalized client interaction and also autom automate the core banking processes. Um, so another thing to remember is that finance is very strict or has like very strict regulations since it contains a lot of pers personal customer data. For example, my bank details, my, um, my names, ETC, and those are very uh, personal data that you also need to consider. Um, another, th so how can you apply the different generic technologies with the least risk possible? Um, and when you talk about risk is people losing money, something just going wrong. Um, money is a very sensitive topic with humans. So if you're going to create an idea with Gen AI, just make sure that the, the least, the risks involved are at the least, uh, least of it. So there are, so when we look at the Gen AI technologies, just uh, in general, we have the different chatbots and that can be used for call centers to reduce call handling. We also have the different AI generated personal content for marketing. So if a bank is trying to do some ads to reach their right customers and they already have the data they can use, they use that data to market uh, their products more. And also checking the credit worthiness from data, like my past history of uh, me using a bank, uh, how I borrow loans, how I repay them. So that kind of data, how can you uh, use Gen AI to like improve it? Um, what I, this is just a question for you, but where else do you think um, Gen AI will make a big difference in FinTech? So this is, it's, we're going to look at it in the challenge and yeah. So when we talked about the characteristics of a good idea, one of the things we mentioned was it needs to have impact, but how do we me actually measure impact or what is impact in the first place? When we talk about impact, we, we, we're talking about the extent to which a project achieve its intended outcome and create an actual positive change. So this could be things like defining clear objectives and when you're formulating your objectives for your project it always has to be smart and then you identify the different kpis for example um, the number of beneficiaries who are going to benefit from your project is it going to increase knowledge or skills in any way or is it going to like reduce uh, specific problems that's one way of identifying the kpis to ensure that your project will actually make an impact and um, so after identifying all these um, KPIs for your project, you need to collect and analyze data and then send feedback to different partners and uh, stakeholders to see if it actually, if, imp if you're actually having impact uh, in your project. The other thing is also making sure you continuously monitor and evaluate your project and knowing when to stop uh, 
your project or knowing whether to continue putting your pro your product in the market or actually stop. Uh, that's also what's on um, continuously monitoring your project. The other thing that we talked about or the key aspects of having a good idea is um, making it sustainable and it's having an ability to scale. So one of the sustainability factors to consider is financial viability. So in the next few years, um, is it going to make me make enough money to sustain itself? Will I have enough funding uh, to continue deploying this product of mine? Does it make sense financially? In short, is the question you need to be asking yourself when you come up with an idea. And also resource efficient. Is it going to need a lot of GPUs or do I just need my computer and it's going to work well? So there's no need of writing an idea that needs a lot of resources and you currently don't have um, enough resources. And another thing with sustainability is community engagement. So this could be the people who are actually using your product. Like, are they, what are they saying about your product? Or are they saying it's helping them improve uh, their problems? Is it making their work easier? or is it uh, the other way around? Another thing to consider is capacity building. And when I talk about capacity building, it's mostly about um, the capacity. Like if I'm using a, if I'm using a product now, um, and is it possible that I go train other people on this product and then they can also continue using it uh, continuously. For example, an edtech system, if I create an edtech system that can be used at an academy, it can also be replicated in other institutions, for example, even high schools, other universities, ETC. So when you talk about capacity building, it's the ability of other uh, people to actually use your product and that's going to ensure like it's sustainable because it's going to scale a lot. And then also uh, another thing to consider for sustainability is like continuously monitoring and evaluating your product. So um, those are the things to consider to ensure that your product is actually sustainable. When we talk about scalability, it's how can my project or how can my project grow from 10 users to a thousand users in the next one year and in the next few 10 years how can I get it to 20,000 or ETC um, so how can I replicate this product of mine to be able to serve uh, more people and also how many uh, the number of partners or collaborations that you bring into your project um, shows some kind of uh, ability to scale because when you partner with an organization, it's proof that, okay, we like what you're doing and we can partner together because what you're doing complements what we're doing. So that's also one of the things when we talk about scale. Hello. Hello, Margaret. Um, hey guys. Sorry, my my lights and Wi-Fi just went out. So I'm using my phone now. Um, does anyone have uh? Does anyone have um? the slides that they can help share on the back.
Sorry, just a minute. Uh, so, yeah, I think we were also almost done on talking about sustainability and scalability. Does that make sense when we talk about sustainability and scalability? Okay, so we hope. Hope that when you're going to write your, uh, when you're going to come up with your ideas, you're going to enable in the next coming years. Will uh, is it going to alleviate problems, or is it going to solve an actual problem? Etc. So make sure you think about that when you're coming up with your idea. Um, otherwise, I think let's just go to the challenge. Hmm. I have uh, the challenge document. Do you want me to share it? Um, no, let me just share from my phone. I think, yeah. Thank you, though. Can you see my screen? Yeah, but it's a bit distorted. Yeah, but yeah. Okay. Um, you can share. You can share from yours because I'm using my phone. It's not going to do well. Please help me share. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Um. Otherwise, do you guys have any question while Abraham shares? Uh, so thanks, far, it's Abraham. clear. Uh, yeah, it's clear so far. Okay, thanks. So this week's exercise is going to be about ideas to change the world, and in specific, in the finance industry. Um, so just a question before we go into the challenge. Um, do you guys know what or some of the products that Kifia has. Um, just Let's just have a small discussion. Do you guys know the different products that Kifia has? Considering Kifia is a fintech industry, um, what are some of its products? Yes, Shumili? Uh, I think they, they, they work on uh, digital uh, finance uh, systems. They are mm -hmm. automate some of, uh, some of uh, payments, uh, something mm -hmm. like that. Mm -hmm. Yes, so that's one of them. I think they have different products or they incubate um, other certain products. One of them is like the credit scoring platforms, ETC. So do a little bit of research about the difference uh, fintech, uh, tech, fintech finance technologies that are out there and then see how you can improve them in a way that they can scale, impact people and be sustainable. Um, so let's go to the challenge. So this week we just want to hear your ideas on that topic. So for this exercise you will tell us how you're going to use how you think from the knowledge you've gathered from Ten Academy on Gen AI and FinTech, you're going to tell us how Gen AI is going to, how it will be used in the FinTech industry. And make sure you highlight the part, it, it impacts like 5 million young people in Africa in the coming five years. So be very specific and describe how you will measure impact uh, on the slides, there's a way on measuring impact on your idea and also the role that technology will play and, yeah, what role technology will play and how it will play. And also keep in mind that finance also has like strict regulations due to customers' personal and private data. So it's always under scrutiny for standards of accuracy, security and privacy. So how are you going to apply your solution with more impact, but also with the least risk? 
Um, so keep that in mind. So for this, I, for this, we just want you to create slides, maximum of six, and we have guidelines on how you're going to create each slide. So for the first slide, you're going to just state the problem you're addressing. And when you're stating the problem, um, give us a reason why you decide to choose that problem in the first place. And if, and if it only affects the fintech industry or other industries as well. So your answer should be very clear on the problem you're solving. And then you can illustrate or use at least one data source and the scale of the problem. So this problem should affect at least 5 million people globally. And mention if the issue is occurring only in your country or region. And if yes, why is it only occurring in your region? If no, identify other areas where it would also be occurring. And when you ask yourself, when you answer, ask yourself, can this problem be solved by Gen.AI solutions? Another thing is how would you solve this problem? What approach would you use and why? So we're encouraging you to, uh, for this to just choose um, uh, FinTech and Gen.AI in general because we're, f we're being funded by a fintech industry. And yeah, so yeah, f so after defining your problem, you're going to give us uh, your solution that you've come up with on how to solve the specific problem. And then also give us the role that technology will play. And number four and five are bonus points, but if you find the past solutions and illustrate how your solution has improved, um, the the current uh, solutions in the market and that's bonus another thing is your project and your solution has to be very realistic in a way that people actually need to see that this problem exists and yes your solution makes sense so it has to be realistic it doesn't have to be very imaginary and non-practical um so just a couple of pointers um you are free to use both images and words um, and when you're writing your bullet point your your slides make sure you use bullet points um, make it easy to read don't put a lot of information uh, proofread your content or have your peer proofread your content for you and then there are only like five main points you need to address that we've listed there so there's no need to add this information and then make sure you have a cover page with your name title each and every slide so this is the slide is on problems this is on solution this is on how technology will play and you can use images etc so that link over there takes you to a sample template you don't need to use it and then the other one is for the slides that we discussed in class and this exercise is going to be really useful, not only just for this exercise, but in future, if you guys are, find yourself in places where you need to pitch your ideas and to stakeholders, or if you're trying to look for capital to find your project, this uh, come back to this document and try and uh, see how you're going to draft or craft your idea uh using the f the guidelines that we've given you on this document um yeah we're hoping this will be useful so we have an extra links if you are thinking of coming up with a storyboard they're not really necessary considering you have a lot of work um so writing a storyboard canva ppt there they're just to help you in the future but for now just a slides slides document is enough and i think Every one of you has come up with slides before, so I, I know you, you're you okay with it. Um, otherwise, that's all for today. Do you have any questions on this topic? Do you already have ideas that you think you're going to um, write for this, for this challenge? Feel free to just unmute and speak. Yes, Abraham. Uh, I'm not sure I have any specific ideas yet. 
but mm -hmm. uh, uh, using the, the framework you explained uh, earlier, mm -hmm. I'll try to find uh, and maybe notice, uh, I'll try to notice some challenges. Okay, yeah. okay. Um, just go through the ideas you've created and just see if they're realistic and if they actually solve a good problem and they have impact and are sustainable. I look forward to reading your ideas. Um, Matthews and Yadasa, do you guys already have ideas that you're going to write? Your brainstorm. I, okay. Yes. I I didn't figure out yet, but I will do soon. I think. Okay, but I I hope you have a clear understanding of the different fintech finance technologies that exist. Yeah. Somehow. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so if you're still unsure, just go read more about it. And yeah, this should be a fun exercise. Um, thank you guys for being here and have a great evening. All the best with your work. Okay, uh, bye guys. Thank you.